Presented by Cisco, Texas and Texas A&M, two of the top teams of the Big 12. The Aggies, in fact, are on top all by themselves after that stunning comeback win in Lawrence on Saturday night. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you. Here's how big this game is. Dickie V's in College Station for the first time in 26 years. And why not? Maybe the best player in the country in Kevin Durant, one of the hottest teams around in A&M. Going to be fun to see how Durant attacks the Aggies tonight. Kevin Durant, you're talking about multidimensional. A guy that can flat out score. Look at the 37 against Colorado. He's averaging 33 a game in Big 12 competition. He can score in so many ways. He has a various way of scoring. He can score, take it into the goal. He can post. He can shoot the medium-range jumper. He can take it to the goal, and he can shoot the three to the tune of 47%. That's right, in conference play. And he's averaging 13 rebounds a game. And I went to the VBDI. The Vital Ball Dome Index will come out every Monday. And it just said, move over, Orlando Tucker. The new player of the year for Dickie V. It's Kevin Durant, baby. Maybe he's number one, Tucker number two, three for Sikas, and four Aaron Brooks. And you might feel even more strongly about that if Durant can get off against the Aggies tonight because they're as good a defensive team as there is in the country. Well, they lead the nation in field goal percentage defensively. Think about that. And they also can score. They do a great job late in the game. And the reason, Mr. Clutch, A.C. Law, he has dynamite in the last five minutes. I'll tell you one thing, this club understands shot selection. They play well as a team, and they're going to be a team to reckon with in March Madness. The Yaggies are for real. We'll take a look at our star watch. Durant's not a one-man gang. D.J. Augustine, one of the best freshmen and point guards in America, and A.C. Law, if it weren't for Durant, he might win Big 12 Player of the Year. And time now to look at the starting lineups brought to you by Liberty Mutual. Texas is starting four freshmen and a sophomore, yet they're 16 and 6, ranked 25th in the nation. AM has started the same lineup all season long. They got a couple of big physical guys up front. And Tanis Kavalaskis and Joseph Jones will be a handful tonight. AC Law, what a night he had against the Jayhawks Saturday. What a career Kevin Durant is going to have. Boy, has he been fun to watch the last few months. I'll tell you one thing, keep an eye on a key player, Josh Carter, shooting the three. Because if Texas zones, like they did against Kansas State, have made 14 threes, Carter could be a lethal weapon. On the first possession, it's Kavaloskis who is defending Durant. We're going to see a number of different Aggies try to guard him. Durant misses the three, and the rebound comes down to A&M. I think it's amazing when a guy can shoot 47% in conference play from the trifecta. A guy that gets that much attention defensively. Kavaloskis going right at his man. He's got a size advantage on Damian James. A&M much bigger and stronger inside than the Longhorns as James turns it over on the travel. I think one of the most underrated players in the conference is Kavaloskis. This guy knows how to score inside. Billy Gillespie's brought excitement, enthusiasm, and energy to three E's here <laughs> to College Station. As has been well documented, and as the folks down here know all too well, 0-16 in league play the year before Gillespie got here. 8-8 eight eight two years ago, 10-6 last year, 7-1 and one and leading the Big 12 right now. Durant all the way, hangs and misses, and the rebound again down to the Aggies. Now he did a great job going from coast to coast with the ball in his hands. Along the kick in the corner, and the three goes down for Dominique Kirk. I tell you, that guy should shoot the ball a little bit more often. Mason, Texas in transition, and the Horns are on the board. I tell you, Rick Barnes' club does a great job after a score. They get the ball up the court so quick. Texas averaging almost 84 points per game, but the Aggies giving up just over 54. It's going to be a battle of tempo here tonight, although the Aggies are getting it up and down. Law makes it 7-2. Mr. Ambidextrous, there he is using the right hand with that drive. Augustine, look at him get into the lane, a little strong on the layup, though. You talk about a diaper dandy having a great year, averaging almost seven assists a game. D.J. Augustine. Avaloskis with the I left hand. Him. I liked him up in Kansas. This kid knows how to play. He's from Lithuania, very aggressive. Backdoor cut, and Kavaloskis with the foul on Abrams. The tempo in this game is really special. Or something else. I'm telling you, up and down, rivalry week. What a week this week in college hoops. Take a look right here. Kavaloskis showing that he can use the left hand as well, lays it on the glass. 
He's really aggressive offensively, yeah, Dan. Very physical, a little bit of a mean streak in him. Has really come along over the last four years, a couple of years at a junior college, only weighed about 200 pounds. He's up to 250 now as a senior, and he is arguably the most improved player in the Big 12. His scoring's up about six points per game from last year. Hey, you talk about certainly Texas, though, on the other side. When you look at Rick Barnes and think about what he lost, I mean, losing the likes of P.J. Tucker and Gibson yeah. and Aldridge, unbelievable. Four freshmen starting, and you know what? They were so close to being undefeated in conference play. Lost a heartbreaker to Kansas State and Bobby Huggins, and then lost that three-overtime game on the road to Oklahoma State. Maybe the game of the year, and the rematch of that game will be down in Austin one week from tonight on Big Monday. Kirk has hit one. He'll try another. Why not? They can shoot the three. They got to get him to want to shoot the ball a little bit more. Loves to play on the defensive side. He's like a glue man. He's option number five offensively, but his teammates keep telling him, look for your shot. He's hit a couple as the horns turn it over. I'll tell you the one thing they do really well. They defend as a unit. They give help as you look at Rick Barnes. Last year came close to going to the Final Four for the second time. Lost to LSU, I believe, in the Elite yes, Eight. Just like AM lost to LSU in the second round of the tournament, so they've got that in common. Last year, Texas won two out of the three matchups from AM. The AM win was here. The Texas wins were in Austin in the Big 12 tournament. Laws floater. The follow by Jones won't go down. But what athleticism there by Jones got way above the rim. He's fouled out 17 times in his career. Has a tendency to get in foul trouble. Durant with a trap. He definitely lifted. He's trying too hard early in this game. How good has he been? I think he had 34 on Baylor, 37 he had against Texas Tech on the road, and then also had 23 rebounds and 32 against Kansas State. He is rewriting the, the A&M, the, excuse me, the Texas record book and also the Big 12 record book with what he's done. 30 or more points in six of his last nine games, and we get a foul away from the ball. A well, three-second violation, rather going against the Aggies. Billy Gillespie did not like that call. Working over Eddie Hightower right now, who's here with Mark Whitehead and Steve Wellman. Well, Billy Gillespie very active on that sideline. As you said earlier, Dan, so well. They were 0-16 in conference play when he arrived. Took him to the NIT, won 21 games. NCAA second round last year. This program's never been to the tournament two years in a row, but that'll end this year. Mason. Maybe had too long to think about that shot. They're also going to win 20 games for the third consecutive yep. year, first time in the history of the school. He's rewriting all the records. Carter baseline up and under. Carter with a reverse layup. He's normally a great three-point shooter. Was three for six against the Jayhawks. Had that great gutty comeback win at the five. Four different Aggies have scored already. Durant's three is true, and it's 14-7. to seven. My friends, he is unbelievable. That's all I simply can say. Multi-talented, the best perimeter skill player I have seen in many a year on a collegiate level. They front Jones because of the size disadvantage, and they pay for it. A&M by nine. And now all five Aggies, Dick, have already scored in this game. Jones is dragging his foot a little bit. Durant misses the pull-up. He's one for four in the early going. Well, they're a balanced basketball team. You yep. look at A&M. Very difficult to defend. They get a lot of good ball movement. They screen well for one another. Spacing, too. Always 15, 17 feet apart. It'll stay with A&M as we go to a timeout. A great start for A&M. Much to the delight of the Reed Rowdies. Holly Rowe will tell you more about the rabid student section of the Yankees when we come back after this. exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. And in part by Cisco. Welcome to the Human Network. And Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. An early nine-point lead for a and known as a football school in a football state. You sure could fool us. With more on that, here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, it wasn't long ago that people said playing here was like playing in an opera house the excitement of this a &M team this year. 6,000 students were camping out for tickets to this game. They had to suspend that, so we caught up with those residents of Gillespieville to find out what they like. It's really amazing how far we've come so quick to think that three years ago we were 0-16 in conference. 
And now we uh, single-handedly hold first place in the Big 12. Woo! Ten players on the court, one Billy Gillespie, and we're the 12th. And we're the 12th. <laughs> That's why I want to get front row so I can, like, touch him. I just run out into the court and touch him. <laughs> It's, it's that maroon tie. It brings out his skin tones and his eyes, and it just makes him Gillespie-ish. Gillespie-ish. Oh, the most touchable bachelor in College Station. The man has become oh. a rock star here in just three short years, and why not with his accomplishments? They are impressive, and, and those students, they were there were so many, Dick, on Wednesday night. They were lining up Wednesday night for seats for tonight's game. There were so many, they had to disperse the crowd and hold a lottery by computer just to make sure that everything stayed calm. There were too many students for tickets. Josh Carter, one of the nation's leading three-point shooters, knocks it down. Over 50% dick from beyond the arc. Well, I told you, at the top of the show, yeah. I think he could be the key player in this game. He's shooting ability. Now Brian Davis with a block. One of the top five shooters in America from the trifecta. Davis gave him some good minutes off the bench for the big guys up at Kansas Saturday night. Both Jones and Cavaloskas spent much of the night in foul trouble. Kansas State broke a win streak of 22 in a row down in Austin and did it with the yeah. three-point shot. They made 14 Bobby Huggins' club. Meanwhile, AM has won 20 in a row here at Reed Arena. Texas in a 2-3 zone. They're sitting in a 2-3 zone, a lot of gaps. Carter could be the dangerous guy in the 2-3. Law's baseline jumper. He is tough. I'll tell you one thing. He knows how to play. It may not be the prettiest shot. It may be that knuckleball we talked about, a Phil Negro special. Yeah. But it finds nothing but net. A&M with nine field goals in this game, Dick, and they've got nine assists already. They do a great job sharing the basketball. They really get the ball. Look at the screen up on top. And watch it reverse the basketball. They do a great job with ball movement, and then he can take you one-on-one, -on -one, a little isolation. He is incredible in the last five minutes of the game. Durant right into a double team, popped it up. He gets so much attention, Kevin Durant, everywhere he goes. Defenses gear themselves, coaches make their game plan actually designed certainly around Durant. The numbers look like a misprint in conference play, averaging better than 33 points and 13 rebounds per game. Is that 2 3 zone? I believe Carter's going to like seeing that zone. Here he is. And the rebound to Durant. I tell you, that performance against Texas Tech and Bobby Knight was incredible. 37 points and 23 rebounds. Yep. Think about those numbers. <laughs> Only twice in the history of the Big 12 anyone's done it. And Bogan did it. It was a triple That's overtime right. game. Man-to-man -man defense by the Aggies. Augustine at the point for the Longhorns. Down to Durant. Again, he draws a crowd. Baseline jumper goes down and one for Kevin Durant as he is pumping his fist. Eddie Hightower says he got hit on the elbow. You know, some people talk about as you watch him right here, a little post move. He'll spin to the baseline. I mean, he could score right now in any league. There is no doubt. Played him one-on-one, -on -one, you have no shot. But you know what he talked about? He said, well, could he be like Carmelo Anthony who carried Syracuse? The difference, Carmelo had a lot of help. A guy by the name of Hakeem Warwick and a host of other veteran players joined them as well. Okay. And that's the but yeah. they certainly got, got Augustine. Right, so that's probably a push. The foul on Carter, his first. Durant, who's a great free throw shooter as well, over 80% of the season. Knocks it down, and he has six of the ten Texas points. He is better than advertised. I'll tell you this. You know, certain players you look at, you and I did a game of LeBron James in high school, right. and he was better than advertised. Here's numbers, and probably a good foul there. Otherwise, Durant would have made some noise with a jam. He loves playing. He loves on the college campus, being with the kids, enjoys it. I was teasing Rick Barnes before the game. You were there. Rick says, Dickie V, he may be coming back to school. I said, Rick, I got a better chance of growing here. <laughs> I'd love to see him come but, back because nobody likes that more than I do. But realistically, I can't see it happen. You know Rick Barnes and Thad Mata every night before they go to sleep. If they say their prayers, they're, they're praying for just one more year for these two outstanding freshmen, as good a duo of freshmen as maybe we've ever seen in the game. And all the other coaches are praying that yeah. they go out. Durant for three. Big He's time. got nine. Hey, call your friends up, okay? Get on the phone right now in Rivalry Week. You're seeing one of the top ten teams in America and the best player in America. Not even close. He is by far the best talent in the USA. Boy, the, the BBDI's been 
been shaken up a little bit uh, in recent days, huh? Well, yeah, you know, I have Tucker number one, and he's certainly terrific. Yeah. But this kid's in another world, he, he what is. he's doing. He's off the charts. A travel. Law thought he kept that pivot foot down. And Hightower says no. Now, where does Kevin Durant rank among the all-time great freshman, at least the last 15 years, your top yeah, five? You know, my super five and my 15, who I've loved, I love Anthony, I love Odin. His upside's unreal. I used to love Iverson down at Georgetown. And Elton Brand, and there's a host of others you can throw in there as well, but those are my favorites. Yeah. Carmelo was brilliant leading Syracuse to that national title. Statistically, none of them have done what Durant is doing. I mean, it's amazing. And he's not just chalking shots up. He's yeah. taking shots that are really good shots. He's playing as a team player, and he's just carrying a bunch of young guys. Think about how amazing it is because they have four freshmen starting. Foul on Dominique Kirk of the Aggies. Texas ball with a fresh 35. Their record would be unbelievable if they had pulled out a couple close games. Lost an overtime in Tennessee. Lost in the last second shot by Neitzel. Right now, State. he is single-handedly, Dick, getting the Aggies into foul trouble. He's so difficult. All the players talked about how they were looking forward to competing against Texas, but they all were absolutely just raving about the ability of Durant. That foul was on Jones, his first. Now, Kavaloskis will check back in for him. Kavaloskis has one. Kirk has two. Carter has two. Early foul trouble for the Aggies. Now, Abrams buries a three, and the Longhorns are right back in it. They could have used Abrams' shot against Kansas State. Normally a real good shooter. He's two for 16. He has 83 threes he's made, and Durant coming into this game and made 48. This is a 9-0 run for Texas. Well, they shoot the ball so well from the perimeter. Law will answer with a three. A nice pass from Kavaloskis. What about the scouting report that says he can't make the perimeter shot? <laughs> They're going to get rid of that scouting report. He's better than 40%. Yeah, it can knuckle all at once. It finds the bottom of the net. Connor yeah. actually into the game for Texas. Oops, there's a carry. Yeah. Yes, August. sir. Augustine. Three good zebras on the game today. Eddie Hightower, Steve Wilmer, Mark Whitehead. Timeout on the floor. Inside. Outside and a three. AM up by eight. This AM by eight over Texas early. This is rivalry week, and we've got a special wrinkle for you this week down on Tobacco Road. The men on Wednesday, the women on Thursday. The men's game subject to blackout in ACC markets. The women's game pitch number one against number two. You'll be there for the, the men's game on a Wednesday. One of many rivalries to keep an eye on this week. Well, I can't wait to get down there with Mike Patrick on Wednesday. And on Thursday, what a game. Unblemished, both of them. Gail Gustin Kors against Sylvia Hatcher. What a matchup that is. I read a lot of she makes some big plays down there for North Carolina. How about Saturday night? We'll Saturday. be at Rupp Arena. Yes, sir. Rupp Arena Friday night. You should join me. I'm going to Vegas. I'm going to see Elton John. Yeah, what? come and see Elton John. I, I want to come back as you in my next life. <laughs> Eight-point lead for A&M despite nine early points by Kevin Durant. Foul against the Longhorns as we check in for the Reese Davis for a sports center 30 at 30. All right, Dan, women's game earlier tonight on ESPN2. Tennessee, number three in the land, led by Candace Parker, took care of Georgia 73-57. The finals, the Lady Vols continue to lead the SEC. Number one team, Duke, beat Clemson to set up that showdown with North Carolina later this week. Colts celebrating their victory in the Super Bowl in a frigid Indianapolis. Much more on the day after the Super Bowl on SportsCenter after the game on ESPN News Now. There's my Reese Davis. He's my Peyton Manning. That's right. He's my Peyton he's Manning. He's your MVP. Oh, yeah, he's my MVP. <laughs> he gets me to football, baby. Kirk with a miss. Get the live by Jones. Great job. He's a very physical player. Law again. Oh, yes, uh, all the experts, they say he cannot shoot. CNS cannot shoot. What are they watching, baby? What are they watching? Law with 10 points and five assists already in this game. I was teasing him today at the dinner they were having. 
I said, hey, how come you don't play the first five minutes like you do at the end? <laughs> well, says, tonight, you sound, sound like Coach Gillespie. He tells me that all the time. Tonight he is. Dominique Kirk, though, just picked up his third foul of the game. If there is a problem early, Gray and Emmett's fouls. Kirk's going to have to go out. And Donald Sloan, a freshman from Dallas, is going to come in. Kirk's already made a couple of threes, and he's a terrific defender. But we're not going to see him again, you wouldn't think, for the rest of the half. Well, you know, the Reed Rowdies, they've been out here early. Had a chance to get in the crowd with them and have a blast. Home court, they've won 20 in a row. Right now, the longest home court streak, Dan. Gonzaga with 49, Air Force 28, BYU 28. And John Calipari, he just keeps rolling yeah. with Memphis with 26. George Washington, 24, the Buckeyes, 22, Butler, 21, and A&M, 20. Butler moving into the top 10 of the new poll released today. A&M right now is at number 7 of the coaches' poll, the highest they've ever been ranked, ever, was 6. That was earlier this year. Texas hanging on in the polls at number 25. Wait. And away from the ball, we've got another foul going against the Aggies as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, foul trouble starting to mount for AM. One of the big problems, Dominic Kirk on the bench now with three. Why that hurts them so bad is despite the size difference, he's 6'3", Kevin Durant 6'9". They had planned at times to have him on Durant because he's their best defender. Probably won't be their best defender this half sitting on the bench. Durant with a nice feed. Dexter Pittman misses the dunk. The last foul was on Joseph Jones, his second. So Kirk's got three. Carter and Jones each with two and we're not even halfway through the first half I'll tell you the great passing ability of Durant is really special as well he has great vision for a big player take a look at this defense right here with the man at the top of it mixing it up giving him a different look in the zone and more of a 3-2 after playing a 2-3 earlier he's got that 7-5 wingspan up on top yeah. he can almost take the entire front <laughs> yeah. part of the zone Connor Ashley with a foul. Texas going very big right now with Pittman and Ashley in the front court. So Durant's really playing the three. Remember earlier in the game, he was playing the middle in that zone. You know, one of the reasons Rick Barnes has gone to a zone a great deal, it's to protect a lot of these young kids, to hide some of their deficiencies and liabilities. But you run into the risk like they did against Cardia Martin and company with Kansas State. Gaps making the three. They made 14 of them. Kansas State, what a toughness Bob Huggins is brought to that program. K-State's won six games in a row in the league. They're tied for second with Texas and Kansas, and the Wildcats are at the fog on Wednesday in another big game of the Big 12. They're not seven in a row overall, and they beat them there last year. There'll be a lot of revenge on the mind of kids from out of Rock Truck, Jay Horton. Augustine penetrates, and he is fouled. And that's going to put... The Longhorns on the line as you check out the top four, the big four right now with the Big 12. The Aggies are alone on top at 7-1, and one, a three-way tie at 6-2. and two. The foul was on Kavaloskis, his second. Four A&M players already have at least two fouls. The BBDI just told me that six teams are going to come out of the Big 12 this year. Those four we looked at at Oklahoma State and also Texas Tech, who had those two big wins when they posted a win over A&M and over Kansas. Pompey in, Kavaloskis out. We saw the depth of the Aggies dick tested on Saturday night because of foul trouble. They might even have more of an issue with it tonight. They're going to need some big minutes out of the likes of Pompey, Brian Davis, Sloan, guys off the bench. I'll tell you what impressed me the most on Saturday night. The fact that they went down in double digits and they never panicked in a place that has such a great, great atmosphere and such a good basketball team. The Kansas team is a very good team, make no doubt about it. And they never lost their poise. They stayed in their system. They played and got good shots and they got themselves back in the game and then it was AC law time. There's undoubtedly a certain mental and physical toughness to this Aggie team and also a bit of a chip on their shoulder and a, and a real hunger, probably because of the way they lost last year, that heartbreaking last second three-pointer by Daryl Mitchell at LSU in the second round. Carter. Well, how do you leave him open? He's the one guy you talked about it off the top of the show. I really believe the zone plays right into the hands of Josh Carter. He is such a terrific shooter. You watch him in the warm-ups or at a practice session. He's like automatic. Younger brother of Warren Carter, one of the stars at Illinois. From out of Texas. And Billy played a Big role in some of that recruitment for Illinois. Yep. He was on the staff. Yep. No self. Part of the rebound. Law the drive. And a block at the other end. Offensive rebound for the Aggies. Jones up strong, and he'll go to the line. I tell you, rivalry week, these two really get after it. Hey, 
I don't want the people in Austin to know. I'm going to mention this. They lost to them in football at That's home. Right. Oh, take a look at Carter. You can see him right here with the three. I told you his eyes are lighting up seeing that zone. He could be the star of stars tonight. Now one of the star of stars tonight is Joseph Jones off to a great start. As he goes to the line. And Josh Carter's got eight points and six rebounds already tonight for the Aggies. The, the biggest star, though, is checking it back into the game right now. Durant does not sit down very often. He comes back in and actually will go out. Hey, if he played for you, would you have him sitting on a bench? I don't need him as an assistant. I want to get every minute out of him. And to all you people down there in Longhorn country, get to see him play. Buy tickets. This is so special. I told all the writers, I said, you guys are so lucky to cover a kid like this. Jones out. Now after the second free throw, remember, he's got two fouls. Brian Davis comes back in. So Davis and Pompey are the two front court players right now for a and &M. I'll tell you one thing, Texas to me has done better than I anticipated Great. after losing all the people that they lost. Freshman account for 70-some percent of their scoring, rebounding, and assists. And, of course, that guy's the biggest chunk of change. Exactly. There have been some teams that have been some major disappointments. And I look at Washington now, struggling big time. They've got a date coming up soon with Pittsburgh. Well, Connecticut, despite a win over Syracuse tonight, it's been a rough go for them so far this year with all those young players. But you know what? I expected that with the young people they have. But there's some teams that are veterans. I thought, I, I thought Arizona was going to yeah. be phenomenal this year. James misses the jumper. Double digit lead for AM midway through the first half. There's that zone. I still think, though, Arizona's a capable club with the talent they have in the coaching of really going on a roll. You see the communication between AC Law and his coach, Billy Gillespie. They were kind of butting heads a couple of years ago when Coach Gillespie took over, and AC Law seriously considered transferring. But he stayed, and the program has been the better because of it. 11-point lead for the Aggies on their home court here in College Station. A&M over Texas here at Reed Arena. Some lean years for the Aggie program uh, in the last 15, 20 years. They've had some good teams, but not many. It's been a long time since Dickie V was in College Station. Well, there's tremendous spirit. This is what college athletics is all about, and there's no doubt the crowd can be a factor. But the real factor tonight is going to be tempo. Rice likes to play a ball control. They're very deliberate. The, on the other occasion, we have Texas A&M wants to kick it out, up-tempo. If they get the early tempo, Texas A&M will dominate. <laughs> With Fred White at that game, you, you were a little more mellow then than you are these days. Hey, I like that ESPN logo we used to have to wear. Fred White did a terrific job. He's also the voice for many a year with the Kansas City Royals. Now, do you remember what else happened that day? You weren't the only big star making news I was day. no star, but what yeah. else happened that day? Well, you'll, you'll tell see. Me, you'll see. Big news in Washington that day. Wow. Oh, <laughs> President Reagan yeah. being sworn Very in. Yes, sir. Constitution. Ronald Reagan. Talk about a guy that loves sports. January 20th, 1981. Welcome back. They know the last time you were here. You had some fun with these fans before the game. I huh? had lots of fun. I signed that for them. You see my signature? That's legitimate. I signed that. <laughs> AM with a 20 game home winning streak and sole possession of first place in the Big 12. And AC Law is having some kind of night. 13 points, six assists already. Hey, Dan, where did they come up with that he can't shoot the ball? Whoever they are, they are wrong. Pittman with a foul for the Longhorns, knocking down Law. One tough guy, A.C. Law. You mentioned he can shoot with either hand. The floaters are with the right. The threes are with the left. A good ball handler, penetrator, terrific leader. Look at the way they move the ball. Always getting the good shot because they always make that extra pass. And you know what impressed me today? Holly and I had an opportunity to see the kids gather when they were at their team meal. They were not gloating over their win over Kansas. They were really single-minded learning about tonight. Well, Holly found out earlier today that Coach Gillespie told them you've got until noon yesterday. He told them after the game Saturday enjoy night, the you've got until noon Sunday to enjoy the win over Kansas. After that, it didn't happen. And start thinking about this game here tonight. Oh, he could say it only one. It did happen. <laughs> <laughs> Ask all the folks here. Shot clock at five. Long on the three. He's rolling back the other way. Come the horns. Abrams is their best outside shooter. I tell you, he's got it tonight. They got to get him some looks. He didn't have it against that tough defense of Kansas State. Two for 16 in that game. 44% from beyond the arc on the season. Pompey steps out of bounds. Crowd wanted a foul on Durant. 
He's always been a real good shooter when you talk about Abrams. They got some great recruits coming in next year. Great facilities down there as well. The practice facilities that he has, Rick Barnes, he's really elevated that program. And they're on their way to a renovation of these facilities here, adding a new practice facility and some other amenities for the players that will help them in their recruiting. $21 million. Yep. They raised the money quickly. Out of bounds, off the hands of James, back to the Aggies. You know, I was here in 1981. They were coached by Shelby Metcalf. He dominated the Southwest Conference when he was coaching. And we want to send our best wishes to Shelby right now, battling some illness. And Shelby, we wish you nothing but the best. You have so many fans here all thinking about you. Very successful run as the head coach here at the College Station. Billy Gillespie looking to take the program perhaps to heights it has never seen before. They've never gotten beyond the Sweet 16. See how patient they are against that zone, try to drive it into the gap of the zone. Hey, Billy Gillespie with a grand gesture, and, and I want to be the one to say this because it involves you. Everybody knows how involved you are with the Jimmy B Fund, the B Foundation. Coach Gillespie came up to Dick unsolicited today and said, tell me about the V Foundation. Tell me what I can do. And he became a member of the President's Club, came up, shook your hand, dropped $50,000. Is that right? $50,000. Joining yeah. Mike Krzyzewski, Tom Rizzo, Mike Gray, the host of others, Digger Phelps. Durant oh. knocks it away. And Coach Gillespie told us that his dad is dealing with prostate cancer right now. And he also did this for the wife of the athletic director here, Marilyn Burns. So he's got two reasons to feel very strongly about the fight against cancer. You know, a lot of coaches, they're such great humanitarians. People don't realize it. And they all have their own charities. I know, for example, Rick Barnes does amazing work with cystic fibrosis and different charities in, in Austin. Bill and, Self, we talked with him yes, when sir, we were up in Lawrence. the program yeah. that he has, yeah, which is terrific. Privilege you. They all do so much that people don't hear about. Well, you know, Mike Krzyzewski, John Saunders, and yours truly were really happy to start getting the dollars together for the President's Club that we put together a campaign and now others are joining us and it's just phenomenal. Joseph Jones back into the game with two fouls for the Aggies. We saw Billy Gillespie do this up in Lawrence on Saturday night. He'll roll the dice with his upperclassmen and trust them to play with some foul trouble. There's Al Johnson, a member of the Aggie staff, the third assistant, and he is battling uh, an illness as well, but has come back. Dermatomyositis, I believe, is the pronunciation. And getting back to good health after a real tough go the last several months. He told me today after practice he's feeling really good. And he said, I certainly felt really good leaving Kansas and Lawrence. <laughs> First ever win for AM over Kansas, and they did it up at the fog. Now deeper into his bench. Goes Billy Gillespie, Logan Lee, a fifth-year player from San Antonio, a transfer, get a little of this, Dick, from the University of Hawaii, where he was a starter, but he wanted to come closer to home, even though he knew he wasn't going to get as many minutes. He's a walk-on this year. He's basically missed two years, a transfer year, then a knee injury last year. Told me before the game he's having the time of his life. Well, that's what winning does. Little turnover that went to man-to-man -to -man when you look right there at Texas. Abrams yeah. with a left hand. Nice little pass by Durant. And Abrams gets the score. They're a nice little duo together. Put Augustine into the mix as well. There's a lot of talent. Oh, he left his feet right there defensively. Durant did. Long and a great entry pass to Jones. I'm going to tell you right now, you start talking to all American point guards. You need to start thinking about A.C. Law. I agree. As good as any other nation. We talked Saturday night how preseason Ronald Steele and Dominique James were the two guys who were mentioned the most often. But if you have the conversation and Law's not in it, then you're missing the point. That was a nice little pass by right? Law. He penetrates, gets in the gap, finds the open man. I'll tell you, an underrated point guard doesn't get the publicity because of Noah and Horford. Is Torian Green down there? We're going to see him Saturday night. Foul was on Jones, Dick. His third. So the gamble may have backfired on Billy Gillespie. Kirk's on the bench with three. I think this Texas team could score points quickly. They can take a 13-point deficit and really narrow it so fast. Jones to the bench to join Kirk. Kavalaskis back in, and he's got two. Look at that foul trouble situation. Look at those fouls mounting up. And Kirk started on fire, knocked down two threes early in the game. The lead is down to eight. The foul problems are mounting for the Aggies, and the uh, Reed Rowdies are not quite as rowdy as they were earlier in this game. I mean, Cavaluskas will look inside. I'll dump him the ball on the interior. It's a real battle inside. That's what the Texas coaches told their players at shoot-around, that Damian James is going to be battling hard for 35 seconds every possession with the big guys of the Aggies. 
Had a good shot right there. They had the big guy down in the post and get him the ball. Durant, and the pass bounces through his legs. Look at Law pushing. Slide it inside to the big guy. Now the Laskis draws the foul. They know how to find their big guys well, don't they? Let's go to Holly Rowe. Guys, before the game, Coach Rick Barnes from Texas told me that the importance in this game would be how the perimeter was officiated because of how Texas A&M plays defense on the perimeter. I talked to one of the officials before the game and asked him about that comment. He said, you know, if guys are going east to west on the perimeter and get a hand check or a bump, it may not be a foul. We'll address it. We may warn them. But if they're going north to south and get a hand check from A&M, it will be a foul. So, guys, that's just one thing to keep in mind here as we see the foul trouble continue to mount for A&M. Do you think coaches have a way? I wonder, Holly, if coaches have a way to plan a scene to get the officials to think one way. They're magical with yeah. that. We see that everywhere yes, we go. We, we go to Ohio State. We hear about how old it gets beat up screens. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and every coach is, is trying to put out the word to do everything he can to help his team. And the feeling is the closer the game is called, the more it benefits Texas because A&M is so physical. Just like every Big East coach will tell you before a Pittsburgh game, if they call <laughs> it close, then it'll help the other team. If they let it go, it helps Pitt. That's something I never did as a coach. I never tried to get a little advantage. James was held from behind. You never did? Oh, you never you did? don't believe that. <laughs> Now, Super Tuesday means another great night of college basketball here on ESPN. First, it's 7 Eastern. We just talked about Ohio State. They'll host Michigan, 7 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. And then at 9 Eastern, it'll be LSU and Tennessee. The Vols hoping to get Chris Lofton back for that game. Super Tuesday presented by Lexus, all a part of Rivalry, Rivalry Week presented by Cisco here on ESPN. I'll tell you what a week it is. I can't wait to get down here for Duke, North Carolina. First time since 1989 that Duke's coming in with two long Losses in a row in North Carolina with a loss. But there'll be a lot of intensity, emotion, and passion on that floor. Big win for Florida State yesterday. Oh, yeah. Huh? First time in 15 years. Celebrated a little bit. But you know what? you got to let them celebrate. The I kids agree. deserve to celebrate. And Mike Krzyzewski even said that. You know, up in Kansas after the game Saturday night, we were there. We saw the A&M celebration. And after the game, AC Law apologized for it. I didn't think he had anything to apologize for. Exactly. You're on cloud nine. You win in a tough environment. Foul on Durant. And the crowd with a, a bit of a Bronx cheer there feeling that the calls are not being evenly distributed here tonight. going to send Bo Muehlbach to the line, a transfer out of Arizona, a junior from Lufkin, Texas, as Billy Gillespie has gone deep into his bench here in the first half because of all this foul trouble. Muehlbach misses the front end. They've done a good job on Durant recently. Now he's down to the post, double team, jump hook, no. And we got an over the back going against... The Longhorns, it'll be James with a foul. Seven-point game, Durant and the Horns down here to the Yankees in College Station. UPS Halftime Report. We'll see if Texas A&M's AC Law can be the big man on campus. Also show you how UConn got out of the doghouse by putting the squeeze on the orange, which is something Georgia could not do in the women's game as the Lady Vols continue to roll. Digger and Stacy will join me to see you in just a few minutes on the UPS Halftime Report. Step point lead for AM over Texas. Rivalry week presented by Cisco here at Reed Arena. Dennis Francione and some Aggie football players out taking part in the scene here tonight. You know, several years ago, I came here for a football game. Notre Dame played against Texas AM. All of a sudden, this SUV pulls up and they stop all, everyone. They stop my wife and I and all the people we couldn't go there and let this car through. I wonder who it is. All of a sudden, the president, 41, George 41, Mr. Bush gets out. And who gets out? out of the car with him. I can't believe it. Digger Phillips. No. And then I'm yelling, Digger, Digger, what about me? And Digger goes, I'll let him in over here. And I go walk in. I get a picture. And then I said, Digger, let's go to lunch. He said, Dick, are you serious? I'm going to lunch with the president. And I he said, didn't what invite about you me? with? Didn't invite me. Can you believe it? Big time me. Boy. Now I know what people mean yeah. when they say Digger big time. Boy, you Unbelievable. Know. Sometimes you can tell who your friends yes, are, can't you? True story. <laughs> That's a great story. Seven-point lead for, the, Aggie, for uh, the Aggies, although they're in a lot of foul trouble. Joseph Jones with three, Dominique Kirk with three. 
and Dicker said to me, really broke my ego. He said, President Bush said, who's that guy? That <laughs> 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 really hurt me big time. So who's that guy? I said, well, he's a groupie watching picture. Augustine will go to the line after the foul on Sloan. Augustine's been kind of quiet, handling the ball well, but he's capable of scoring. We saw him against LSU when he attacked that basket. I like this kid. It's been a year of so many outstanding diaper dandy point guards. Michael Conley, Lawson from down in North Carolina. You know, it, it's one of the reasons, Dick, why Coach Barnes and others feel that maybe, just maybe, Durant's going to come back because of how close he is with Augustine. Well, he is close. I hope he does come back. But like I said, I think I got a better chance of growing here. Yeah, I don't like your odds there. Five-point game. They're right back in this. And they Billy Gillespie's gone very deep into his bench again because of the foul trouble. They just, they're just trying to get out of the half right now. Yeah, the foul trouble certainly has put him in trouble. But also, you got to credit Texas a little bit. Made an adjustment defensively. Played a lot better now, man-to-man. -man. The zone opened up some gaps for him. Right now, Dick, A&M has law in the, on, in the game and four players who all average less than 10 minutes per game. So this is these are some deeper reserves getting some key minutes here. Key minutes in a big rivalry game. Especially right now, first place in the Big 12. And the foul's going to be called on Brian Davis coming over to help, and the Longhorns will go back to the line again. They're just attacking and attacking, getting a little isolation, a little one-on-one. Bring the ball to the weak side, and they're going to take a one-on-one. There's the contact. Great job there. The screen was on one side. The defender thought he would use the screen, and Augustine crossed him up, went the other way. Well, both these clubs last year ran into the buzzsaw, a big baby at Davis. LSU, that's one of the disappointments to me. The way I thought they were going to be, we saw them earlier this year. They have struggled. So you look at LSU, Washington, Arizona, who I think is going to regroup. I'm still a believer. This guy got away from uh, LSU. They thought they were going to get him. D.J. Augustine, he really hurt them in that game. Family from New Orleans, and they were displaced by Hurricane Katrina, moved to, to Texas along with the extended family, and that was part of the reason, depending on who you talk to, how much part is up for debate, but part of the reason why he wound up in Austin. You know, with so many new players on the floor, he goes to a full court trap. Rick Barnes hasn't won as many games as he's won, not knowing what he's doing on that sideline and managing the game. Biggest lead of this game was 14 for the Aggies. Now it's down to three. Good help there by Duran. Almost took it away from Lee. He's got that long wing span. Davis inside. And no shot in there with Duran. Duran had three blocks on three Get successive shots. On oh! oh! No dunk, no foul. What a reach though. Slow, nice handoff to Davis. Clean block. They wanted a foul there, but a good block. And they come in transition. Mason, no. Got it back. Mason with a good effort, but can't get the score. Boy, they missed a couple of opportunities the last two times down the floor. Billy Gillespie said, I can't believe it. What about the foul? As you said, Dan, they're just trying to get in halftime. They just want to regroup. They are deep into their bench because of foul trouble and trying to cling to this lead. Keep the ball in this guy's hands. Usually a lot of good things happen. He's missed a clutch down the stretch. Lee with the high arcing That's three. Good. Logan Lay. Now Lay comes up with another round. A little long from all the lead rowdies. Averaging less than a point per game. Buries a three from the corner. He'll talk about that all his life, I guarantee. When he gets older, he's going to talk yep. about hitting the big shot to beat Texas. Davis with a foul way out on the perimeter. His second and two more free throws for Augustine. We are here with Reed Arena in College Station, Texas. A sellout, a whiteout. Show Dick Vitale, Holly Road. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, all a part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. What a finish we're going to have in college basketball. I mean, look at Saturday. You look at an upset Saturday. I mean, one surprise after another. North Carolina gets shot by North Carolina State. Florida State on Sunday beats Duke at Duke. I mean, you think about Kansas State as you see the three by Mr. Lee. You see, for example, Kansas State going into the 22-game win streak at home for Texas. We had the game up there with Kansas and Texas A&M. 
one surprise after yeah. another. They're just going to keep mounting and mounting. There's so much parity in college hoops. The Aggies ending that game Saturday night in a 17-4 run to steal a win up at the five. Augustine you know, continues to knock him down 10 for 10 from the line. Wow, that's shooting, baby. Look at the team, 18 Derrick. for 19. A little Bo Derrick, a perfect <laughs> 10. Crowd's quiet, too. They really have. They really have yeah. quieted down the Reed Rowdies. They were really rare for them early in the game. Sloan trying to take Augustine off the dribble. And Mark Whitehead with the foul call against Augustine. We talked about the foul trouble. You talked about 17, 17 DQs times, yeah. for Jones in his career. He's sitting down with three, as is Dominique Kurt. Kavaloskis has two, and he's sitting down as well because Coach Gillespie doesn't want to risk him picking up his third. You know, Durant had three, his three consecutive games coming in here, the first Texas player to do that since Jim Krivax did it. The last one for him to do it. Sloan knocks down the first. Billy Gillespie so mild-mannered when you talk to him in person and so intense when he is working a game. Well, they call him Billy Clyde all over the state of Texas, all the high schools, and oh, is he raving about the big guy he's got coming from Houston. DeAndre Jordan, is he excited about him? Considered the top player in the state and a player that the Longhorns were after Indiana as well. Indiana, too, yeah. was in a hut. Everybody really wanted him, but it got down to those three. Well, Trust this state me. is a gold mine for high school basketball talent. Trust me, this program is going to be elevated big time with the practice facility, with his inspiration, his spirit. Deeper into the bench goes Billy Gillespie now. Chinamalu Alanu, a freshman out of Houston, into the game for the first time. And a foul before the shot. Is it Pompey? Pompey, his second. Durant will shoot a couple. And he hides out and makes the call. And run a little clear out for Durant. And bring up the ball on a clear out. There's the little bump. He beat him to the spot. Amazing talent. I think about guys like Garnett and McGrady and Novitsky. How they went from high school to the NBA. He knows another guy. Only does it left-handed. Reminds me a little bit of him on a perimeter. Chris Bosch. When he was at Georgia yep. Tech. One year and out. Now playing in Toronto. I get a chance to see him all yeah. the time. He's a superstar. Superstar. But, but Durant, at this age, to be able to shoot the three as well I think as he's he does. A little yeah. more than those guys. I agree. He's got skills at this age that those players didn't have at that age. I don't think there's any doubt that he's the best player in America. I really believe that. Kavaloskis back in, what along with do? Jones. I ask myself one question, what can he do? He can rebound, block yeah. shots, pass, shoot, score. The defense is improving. He can become a better defender, but exactly. it's something he's working on and they're working on with him. It would be better, too, if he had some veterans around him. Bob Knight sung his praises. That's good enough for me. Oh, nobody over there. Kavaloskis was about to swing the ball to the left side. There was nobody there, so he'll put it on the floor. No basket. Fouled before the shot, says Ed Hightower. And Billy Gillespie didn't like that call. The foul is going to go against Dexter Pittman. An interesting story. Number 34 on your screen. Big fella, yeah. But he's lost about 90 pounds since last spring, since his last high school basketball wow. game. 90 pounds. With more, here's That's Holland. Amazing. Well, guys, they used to call him Dex the Trim because when he came to campus, he was well over 360 pounds. But now they call him Sexy Dexy. He's wow. lost those 90 pounds. How he's done it is he would go two hours before school started, 6 a.m., by himself for extra workouts all through the season. Guys, that was an extra effort. And at one point during the season, Rick Barnes looked at his other players and said, look, if all of you were working as hard as Dexter, we'd be winning more right now. So he set a great, a great example for everybody else with his work ethic and playing time going up because he's finally getting in shape. I'll tell you one thing, Holly, he must be a big man on campus and big down on 6th Street up in Austin, one of the great campuses and great colleges in America. Great city, Austin, Texas. Pittman becoming more important. Matt Hill, another talented big guy, another freshman, is out with a foot injury right now, so players like Ashley and Pittman are getting extra minutes. Augustine, and it's blocked. He really can attack the basket, though. I'll tell you one thing, I love Augustine's penetration ability. Boy, look at the hustle for every loose ball from both teams, and what a drive by Augustine. I love his penetration ability. He's the 3D man, drive, draw, dish, or he can score and as well. AC Law shaken up. 
That's the last thing they need with just about every other veteran they've got in foul trouble. All right, the three losses for A&M. They lost to LSU, UCLA at the winning classic, and Texas Tech by two. They're going to lose ball right now. Augustine's going to get the ball on the wing. There's the head fake for you young kids. Triple threat position, face the basket. Timeout on the floor. Three-point game, 19 seconds to go in the half. Go in the half. They have somehow survived massive foul trouble here in the opening 20 minutes. A team that is as good as any in America at dealing with adversity. You know, they've only given up 70 points is the most they've given up all year. The tempo and rhythm of this game certainly is not playing in the hands of Texas A&M. It's playing more or less into the offensive-minded kind of game of Texas. Yep. Jones and Kavaloskis on the floor for the final possession of the half. I would go to Kavaluskas. I'd get him some touches on the inside. Instead, it's Law with the right hand. Well, you know what? That was cleared out by Kavaluskas. Yep. He did a great job in opening up that lane for Law. You want to talk about a first half for AC Law. 15 points and eight assists. See right here? Look how Kavaluskas, he clears out a guy with a little screen. Squared up, used his body exceptionally well to help his teammate. And now the big guys in foul trouble get out of there for the last nine seconds instead of having to play defense. They can run the ball up the court quickly after a score from that free throw line. You watch Texas. They drill out of this area of the game. Big Barnes has done a phenomenal job everywhere he's basically been. He was at Clemson before. He was at Providence. George Mason George before Mason that. was an assistant to Gary Williams along with our old friend Frischella. Sandy does a great job on Big Monday, Big 12 with Ron Franklin. Durant short on the three as the first half comes to a close. Durant with a dozen in the first half. But they made him work for his points. They made him work for his shots. And despite the foul trouble for a and the Aggies lead at the break. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Coach Barnes, how were you able to take advantage of their foul trouble there in the first half? I didn't hear what you said. How were you able to take advantage well, we of their just, foul trouble? You heard the shoot around today. We said we're going to drive the ball at them, make them put pressure on the basket. Well, we wanted to put pressure on the basket, and it was good. It was able to help you close the lead, but now what do you do defensively? AC Law continues to hurt you. Well, it depends. we got to do a better job than we started the game with with our man, but uh, we're okay. We're okay right now. All right, thank you. Down five, but in the game of the break. Coming up, the UPS Halftime Report. Uh, we're going to take it back to the studio now and join Reese Davis, Digger Phelps. And <laughs> now, this is one of the big games here in Rivalry Week. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. All the part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. We're here at Sold Out, White Out, Reed Arena, 45-40 A&M leading Texas. Great atmosphere here tonight. A really an accomplishment for the Aggie Stick to still be leading with all the foul trouble they had in the first Yeah, half. foul trouble really set them back, especially with Jones and Kirk. But they also, when you look at the situation, got the ball in A.C. Law's hands. And he made some big plays in the first half to give him that lead. You look at him right here. We're going to take a look at inside, outside play against the zone early in the game. Bring the ball out from the interior to the perimeter. And Law knocks down the three. Then we're going to watch how they clear out right here, Durant. Watch this right here. Kavaluskis clears out space so that Law can go right to the basket. Hey, I'll tell you what's big as you look at Durant. Remember this. This guy's a second-half explosive machine. In his last three games, 26, 24, and 21, in the second half. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, those aren't game numbers. Those yeah. are just second-half second numbers. Second-half numbers. He's incredible yeah. in the second half. I know one thing. He had all the NBA scouts drooling. I had a number on the old first question they asked me. Who would you take? Odin or Durant? So who, who would you take? Who would you take? Durant? Who would you take? Oh, I'd take them both. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a year of the politician. I mean, if you like a big dominator inside, obviously, I think Odin will be the first pick because of his defensive presence and his upside offensively, but you can't go wrong. Kevin Durant for the for an NBA team is going to be so special. But let's hope Rick is right and he stays at Texas. Perhaps a higher scoring first half than we expected. 45-40 at the break. Kavaloskis with the up and under. Aggies by seven. I would get the ball to him more often. He makes things happen on the inside. Look at that reverse layup. Augustine coast to coast. Law got crunched on a screen that he didn't see coming and evidently nobody called out. Augustine does a terrific job attacking the basket. He went to the foul line 10 times it was 10 for 10. Kavaloskis puts down. back the miss. But I tell you the first half, they're going to go yeah. to AK. Get AK the ball. 
the senior from Lithuania having a terrific start to the second half. James banks a tough shot home. Nice little move by James right there, taking the ball to the goal. Another one of the young players. Four made field goals, Dick, in the first minute of the second half. See, I think that tempo and that kind of pace really is something Rick Barnes likes. Two-man game, Alon Kavaloskis. Not a bad two duo. Yep. Now Jones swings it, Carter open. They wanted three. Durant with a block from behind on Jones. Look at this guy handle the ball for a 6 10 game. Nice pass. What a great look. Are you serious? Are you serious what you saw there? He fakes the jumper, the little jump pass. Great vision, looks right over the top of the defense. James with the layup, Durant with his second assist of the night. Kavaloskis inside, draws the foul. They're smart going to him. Smart going to him. I think Durant looked like our Stacy. She was a great passer when she played in college and certainly in the pros. How about the block from behind? Yeah, too? look at the block. What does he do? I mean, what can he do? Like the shot. Look at this big guy. I mean, Stacy's got to like that passing ability. She can pass the rock a little better than with Digger pass than a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get even for him for not letting me go to lunch with the president. I mean, unbelievable. And he wasn't paying either. No. You know that. He I know never that. reaches in his pocket. AK, Antonis Kavaloskis goes to the line. That's his 11th point of the night. And they had a nice moment earlier tonight as Connor Ashley checks into the game for James. James going out with his third foul. A player here for Texas A&M by the name of Chris Walker, not this Special year, played kid. the last couple of years, was honored as an honorary captain before the game. He was a walk-on and just one of the great hustlers and grinders in this program. He won the Hustle Award last year. You know what they, they named, named the award? They named the award after well, him. It's this. now the Chris Walker Award. I'm going to pass a message out to every coach out there. If you're looking for a young assistant, he's looking to get into college coaching. Chris Walker, call him up. Wow, Durant just stays after it and stays after it and finally tips it in. 14 for Durant. He's so multi-talented, so versatile. They're going to Kavaloskis. Nice fake. Ashley with a block. He had five of them in the Horns last game against K-State. And then Kavaloskis perhaps with a frustration foul, and that's his third. Actually did a great job staying on the ground, never left his feet. So many guys leave their feet in that scenario. I'm going to watch this right here. Look at the man staying after it. Look at him staying after it. Great effort. Now watch the defensive play. So right there, good defensive effort by Ashley. And I'll take that back. Not a frustration foul. He just kind of ran the guy over before he saw he was there. But nonetheless, it's his third. So Kurt, Kavaloskis, and Jones each have three. Jones is currently on the bench. He's had a history of power. We talked about 17 times. Durant for oh three. My. Oh, my. He's the Gumberg with side. Wow. He's unbelievable. I can't believe this kid. I really can't believe. I haven't seen a talent like this in many a year. At one point, Dick, they were down 14. They have come back to tie it here early in the second half. I mean, you sit here. I've watched a lot of basketball in my time. This kid's got the whole package. The whole package. The Aggies have led the entire game, but Durant has brought the Longhorns back into a tie here early in the second half. Uses the screen. Yeah, Augustine. It's going to be three shots. Good shooter going to the line. A terrific three-point shooter. You think about that home winning streak of 20 in a row. First place. Coming off that win over Kansas. On the roll. You're coming home. You want to excite your faithful fans here. Greeted them at the airport. What about two in the morning? That was Hundreds amazing. Game? Yeah, after the game Saturday night. You talked about it before the game against Kansas. What a chance for A&M to play at Kansas and then to host Texas here. The kind of statement they could make. Look at the free throw differential in the first half. More fouls called against the Aggies. And look at the job that Texas did at the free throw line. Well, the reason is more fouls. They're attacking the basket. Yep. Texas really is aggressive with the ball. And they're attacking, attacking, attacking. There will be a rematch between these two schools in Austin, February the 28th. 9 Eastern on ESPN 2. 2 and 3 for Carter, who's a 90% free throw shooter. Yeah, he's one of those guys usually it's automatic on the line. 
They're going to try to stop the penetration of Augustine. He's so good with the basketball. Right now, Kirk defending Durant, giving up six inches. Kirk 6'3", Durant 6'9". One of the reasons they can get away with that for a while, he likes to drift to play on the perimeter. So therefore, his 6'9", he comes a little bit smaller. Law coast to coast, and he draws the foul. It'll be on Craig Winder, who checked in recently. Law's going to get a couple of shots. You talked about the bus meeting them. This is early Sunday morning after they got back from Lawrence. And as the most eligible bachelor in College Station, he's got that great smile. And there's all the winners coming back. You know, you do stock up, stock down with yes, Mike sir. and Mike every week. You talk about him and this program, stock up. You know, I was on Mike and Mike today. We joked certainly about Peyton Manning. We joked about winning and losing. And the mentality that exists, and I will tell you this, when a Kansas or a Kentucky or North Carolina or Duke lose a basketball game, it becomes such a major story. It's unbelievable. We have gotten to the situation where unless you're number, not number one, you're like a failure. And that's so yeah. sad. Hey, man, he didn't have to win any Super Bowl to tell me he's ahead of him. Rowdies are back into it. Mason open for three. Mason got the good look because of a nice little dribble maneuver by Augustine. Law's really forcing the issue here yes, in the sir. second half. You see the hand like Knightson does, like Golden does. What a night for Law. 19 points, 9 assists. There's Zolden right now coming out of the man. Actually, they got Law playing. They're playing like a gimmick defense right now. They got Law chasing on a perimeter. Durant thought he was pushed, and he stepped out of bounds to turn it over. Look at Law's gimmick defense, almost like a diamond in one. AC Law taking the law in his own hands, Mr. Showman. AC Law says, I am the law. I'm the man. Six-point lead for Law and the Aggies. Lee Rowe here at the College Station. Six-point lead for the Aggies over the Longhorns. Rivalry week presented by Cisco. And a great rivalry between the two point guards tonight. The subjects of our Star Watch pregame. One's a senior, one's a freshman. They both had outstanding nights. I'll tell you, look at the night right there. Anytime you've got 19 points, nine assists, and you got 15 minutes left in the game, and not bad for the diaper dandy. I'll tell you, Augustine, you talk about picking influential freshmen who make an impact. He certainly would be one of them. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, listening into the Texas huddle, Coach Rick Barnes was very adamant, re-emphasizing to his players that three of the starters for Texas A&M right now have three fouls. He, guys, he said, guys, we quit going at him. Don't you remember they've got three fouls? I want you going at him, and he wants better movement without the ball. He wants better movement on offense. There's that 2-3 zone. Watch Carter in that zone. AC Law, and the rebound to Durant. Those three players with three fouls, Kirk, Kavaloskis, and Jones. I want him to attack. I'll get the ball to Augustine and let him attack. We've done a couple of Texas games. We have yet to see a team be able to keep Augustine out of the lane. They're chasing Abrams right now with Law, and they're zoning. They're zoning. Playing like a boxing one or a diamond and one. Durant gets a touch and hits another three. I'm telling you, amazing. You talk about super scintillating sensation. They'll get every adjective and utilize it to describe him. He's got the great rotation, the foul through. Dick, he's now got 20 or more points for the 20th time in 23 games this year. What I like about him, too, he doesn't take a lot of four shots. Yep. How many four shots Not have many. you seen? Four. Here's that zone, two, three. Durant, four for seven from beyond the arc. Turnaround jumper, Jones rattles out. Kavaloskis was discarded under the basket, and back come the horns. Durant wide open on the wing. Somebody better find him. Yep. Durant was wide open. Abrams found him, and now Durant driving on Kavaloskis, oh banks my. it home. Unbelievable. He's awesome, baby, with a capital A. That's the medium-range jumper. And you know what? The Aggies might have been fortunate there. Kavaloskis didn't get his fourth. There was some contact there because he was beaten. I think the VBDI is right that he's the player of the year right now. I mean, he's unbelievable. I think Orlando Tucker would vote for him. Josh Carter with a miss. Rebound Mason, and Texas can take the lead. Look at Durant run. He wants the ball again. He is something else. I mean, call your friends up. Are you serious what we're watching? He's a scoring machine. He's an absolute scoring machine. 
You can't keep up with him. No, keep in score. I'm trying. Can't he, keep up with did, him. Didn't he have 12 at halftime, and he's already got 12 so far here in the second half? Well, we documented yep. the last three games better than 20 in all of them. Carter is the answer. He's the answer against that 2-3 zone. Oh, great rivalry meet, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Augustine is fouled. Who's it on? A couple of players were in the area. And that's what Augustine does so well. I think attack, it's Kirk. Attack, attack, attack. It's Kirk. It's his fourth, Dick. And that's what Rick Barnes wanted. Holly talked about it. Take a look at him right now. Watch Durant operating. Now he's going to drift to the perimeter. Little down screen right in the face. I mean... Unbelievable. Now he's going to take the ball. He's going to utilize the glass backboard, gets the good angle. And now we're going to watch him on the interior. He wants the ball inside. He's a please get me the ball down here. And there he is on the interior. He uses his body so well. Great touch, great feel. Augustine, a perfect 10 for 10 from the line, to make it 11 of 11. And now Sloan will come in. Kirk will have to go out with his fourth foul. And there it is. Durant a dozen in the first half, a dozen already here in the second. You know, I wrote on my website. It's up there today. You go to DickVitalOnline.com. I wrote how he almost, almost committed to North That's Carolina. Right. Can you imagine? Yep. Had he gone down there with what they have? He's from Maryland. He almost Good committed to Carolina. Lawson. Connecticut was also in on him, but he came to Texas and... He has been as good as advertised and then some. As great as Carmelo Anthony better. was his one year at Syracuse, Durant might be even better. Slow with a big three off the bench. He's a combo guard, slow. He made some big plays against Kansas. Rick, we got a ball game on our hands. Augustine. What a rebound, rebound by Durant. In traffic. Pavlovskis gets a timeout call. I love rebounders that can get balls in traffic laterally. This is some kind of rivalry, a great choice for Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. A&M 63, Texas wow. 60. Is he unbelievable? Is he unbelievable? PN HD. Back here inside, sold out Arena Arena. What a game we got going here between A&M and Texas. 63-60 for the Aggies. What a performance we have seen from Kevin Durant, especially in the second half. Here's Coach Rick Barnes with his thoughts on Durant. What you love about him is when the game is over with, when everybody will ooh and ah about what he's done, his question is how to play defense because he knows that that was an area that he needed a lot of work in at the start of the year, and he's pretty conscious of it right now. I'm going to tell you this, Dan. I think it's going to be very difficult for some team when his name is there to bypass him when you talk about drafting. I mean, I love Greg Oden, and I love his upside, but let me ask you a question. How do you bypass what this talent is? I mean, think about it. You know what he reminds me a little bit of? Years ago, a player came out of North Carolina by the name of Robert McAdoo. On the perimeter, led the NBA a number of times in scoring. I had the pleasure to coach him for a short period of time before I got to Ziggy. <laughs> but he was a great offensive player from the perimeter. This kid is a little bit better as a rebounder. That was Durant knocking the ball away. He's so impossibly long, too, to block wingspan. shots and get his arms in the passing lanes. And when he really learns how to play defense and applies himself to defense, he'll become a phenomenal defensive player, he too. Really, he really is a guy that wants to be part of a team. There he's diving on the floor. All the teammates really like him. A lot of times you have guys that score like he does, and teammates, you know, resent the yeah. publicity, notoriety, feel he's on. There's that zone they're sitting in. Hey, that foul was on Augustine, his third. The foul problems are starting to creep up on Texas as well. Carter, they got to get the ball over to Carter. Around and out for Sloan off the fingertips of Jones. No, it's off a Texas player to stay at this end of the floor. They're going to get Carter some looks against that 2-3 zone. We saw him early make some shots against it. He's one of the top five three-point shooters in college basketball. He's got three threes tonight. The Aggies are 10 for 19 as a team from beyond the arc. We've talked well, a lot about their defense. Their offense is very good as well. Well, that three-point shooting has balanced out the free-throw edge, which has gone to Texas. Avalaskis inside the turnaround. How good is that kick? How good is that kick? Every time he seems to touch the ball, something yep. positive happens. The lead is back to five as we go under 12. Durant yeah, is fouled, and it's not going to be Carter. It's going to be Sloan, says Ed Hightower. Billy Gillespie told us, he said, I can't think of how we're going to stop this kid. 8K. 
on the inside for AM. And it's back to a five point lead. So over Kevin Durant in Texas, 11.55 to go in the second half. Every now and again, a freshman is a major contributor on a team that wins the national championship. 1982, Michael Jordan, North Carolina. 1986, never nervous Purvis. Purvis Ellison and Louisville. Of course, most recently, 2003, Carmelo Anthony led Syracuse to a national title. There is no disputing that Kevin Durant is a phenomenal talent. Is he good enough? Do they have enough around him to win a national title? Absolutely not. There's no way. When you look at North Carolina, Mr. Jordan had a little help. Guy by the name of Worthy, guy by the name of Perkins, Matt Doherty, Jimmy Block. Then you talk about Syracuse, they had Warwick, Pace, and then you talk about Louisville, Billy Thompson, Bill Wagner. I mean, he doesn't have that around him. It would be, to me, an unbelievable achievement if you were ever to take them to a national title. I can't see it happening. Not this year. Nice he stays in school another year, yes. Set play for him out of the timeout, and he draws the foul. But let me say this, Dan. You and I were talking off the year. I remember when you and I were assigned to do the game with LeBron James in high school. I told you there's no way that this kid could live up to that billing. And I said during the game, we were wrong because he was better than advertised. This guy is way better than advertised. Back to the line again. He knocks it down to the foul was on Joseph Jones, Dick. That's Four his fouls. fourth. So he goes out. Pompey is in. Kurt and Jones extended bench time in their immediate futures. Well, Holly doing a great job of reporting, pointed out how one of their priorities was to attack to get those people yeah. in foul trouble and have done a great job in that area. Well, their number one goal right now should be getting Kavaloskis out of there because he's got three and he's really hurting them here in the second half. I think you can hurt a lot of people, Kavalus, because yeah. he really understands how to play in the post. See, they go into that zone. It's like a 1 2 2. Some will call it a 3 2. It changes with the movement of the ball. James up top. Trying to get in the gap of it. Trying to match up out here on Carter because he's such a good shooter. Good battle inside between Ashley and Kavaloskis. Kavaloskis very nice physical. Pass. And he got open for the layup. Well, that was created. Yeah. Uh, I could have made that layup. That was created by Carter. You saw me before the game. I was making shots. That's right. 15 feet it in, though. Your range remains limited. We're going to get you in the weight room. Augustine lucky to find Durant right there. The pull up. And the rebound to Law. And they're running. Josh Carter. Yes! And what's amazing about their scoring defense being second in the nation, they don't just hold the ball and look the shot clock. They utilize the whole court. And they lead the nation to field goal percentage defensively. Abrams, nice crossover, and Ashley is rewarded with a jam. Abrams does a great job getting the open man. Remember, only one team has scored 70 on AM all year. Texas is going to blow by that, but will it be enough to win here tonight? Texas Tech scored exactly 70 against the Aggies. That foul line area is wide open in that zone. You can get right behind the front three. Big time defensive play there by Ashley using his reach to come up with a steal. Abrams off the screen. Avaloskis the rebound for the Aggies, and we have an injured player. AC Law uh -oh. is down. Uh oh. The leader, the captain, the best player is down on the floor in pain right now for the Aggies. That's major because he's their catalyst. He's their leader. Remember, he was limping a little bit late in the first half after a collision stayed in the game. This one appears to be a little bit more serious. And how do you replace a guy who puts up these kind of numbers? Goes up to try to block the shot and came down and looked like he rolled that left ankle. We don't want to speculate too much, but something on the left leg. They are chanting his name as he makes his way to the bench, and now they're going to walk him right out of here and into the room, into the uh, trainer's room for a little attention. I got a stat for you. In conference play, you ready for this? He's averaging in the last five minutes 7.3. The opponents are averaging 7.1. That's unbelievable in the last five minutes of a game. He is outscoring opposing teams in the last five minutes of conference games. We saw that against Kansas on Saturday, limping heavily as he heads to the locker room. Logan Lee is back into the game, and now for the Aggies, 
Now it's foul trouble, injuries, and Durant that Texas A&M is dealing with right now, yet they have managed to maintain the lead. And they go to a full court trap with a little out of the game. Kavalaskis inside. Stayed with it. They got a fine quarter. He's got to move a little bit to get free for that jump shot. See the foul line area? It's wide open. I mean, you could put a whole team right through there, right in that foul line area. You got to get right in that area. Sloan has it taken away by Durant. Look at that pass. James with a jam. Nice pass. So unselfish right there, Durant. He could have easily tried to force that action. This might be the most active we've seen him defensively as well. He's really wreaking havoc at the defensive end tonight. Matter of a man-to-man -man. coming out of the zone. Play a man-to-man -man with Law out of the game. Navalaskis. And actually is called for the foul. It'll be his third. We're going to watch Kevin Durant right now. Good anticipation with the steal. And watch him give the ball up. Under control. He's going to actually give it right back to Durant for a little jam. Yep. Instead, it's the third assist of the night for Durant. Meanwhile, the other end. As you take one more look. I love the way he uses the bounce pass. Yep. Head up all the time for you young kids while he's dribbling. Has great vision of the floor. And Rick Barnes will tell you he's a willing student as well. He, isn't, he didn't show up in Austin thinking he didn't have anything to improve upon. He's accepting the coaching that he's being given, and he's obviously benefiting from it with the, the talents of Rick Barnes and his staff. Well, he's a team player. You just watch him around with the kids on the team. You can see he's got great chemistry with them. They love him. Two misses for Kavalaskis, but it'll stay at this end of the floor. Play so hard. You haven't seen many players play harder than this kid. I mean, he pours his heart out. Billy Gillespie trying to go to the NCAA tournament two years in a row. And that's a lock. First time in the history of the school. Sloan. And the rebound comes down to Dexter Pittman. You know, Kavaloskis is a guy, Billy Gillespie went up to Barton County Community College to scout somebody else. Saw Kavaloskis, liked him, and decided to sign him. And he's turned into a terrific player. Well, there's so many players out there don't get a lot of recognition, notoriety, who can play the game. All they need is somebody to give them opportunity. Foul was on Pompey. Well, A&M defensively as good as any team in the league, as good as any team in the country, although Texas is piling up the points here tonight. And offensively, they don't get the credit they deserve. They are very efficient. Good shooting numbers, a very high percentage of assists to made field goals as Pittman bricks a free throw. Hey, you mentioned Syracuse a little bit earlier. That was a year that Texas was in the Final Four as well and lost to Syracuse. 2003. Anthony, yep, 2003. We didn't, we didn't mention Jerry McNamara's name. He was a freshman that year. And yeah. He had a huge say in them winning the national title. He only made six threes in the final game. Write down Pittman's name and see where he is in a couple of years. Rick Barnes thinks as he continues to lose weight and get in shape that he's got a chance to be a special player. Well, just like a sheen to bit uh, over at Connecticut. Yep. Another guy who I think, if he stays in school and listens to the coaches, can ultimately be special. Had a win tonight over Syracuse. Big rivalry there. There's a man-to-man -man defense down around of the zone. AC Law not on the floor. Good decision by Rick Barnes. Who's in multi-defenses. Carter banks it home. I think they're going to get him more shots, Dan. Yep. They don't get him many opportunities. He shoots the ball. There's always a chance it's going in. He has really come into his own. Blew about an inch and a half since last year and put on 20 pounds. 17 tonight for Carter. Winning in a row at home for a &M. James is fouled. Looks like almost collided foot to foot with an AM defender as they ran into each other and he drew the foul. Going to take a look at Carter right now, right down the middle of the defense. He's going to put it off the glass. Texas got some great recruits coming in. We talk about DeAndre Jordan for Texas AM, but Clint Chapman, 6'10, coming in from Oregon, 6'6, Gary Johnson. Alex Wangman coming in as well from San Antonio. Dick Moore, foul trouble for AM. Tell you about it after this first free throw by James. Pompey off the bench has now picked up his fourth, so he's going to go out. Jones is sitting down with four. Kirk is sitting down with four. And Kavaloskis, who's got three, has come back in. Well, if he can get to the five minute mark and be in good shape and bring those people back in, he could be really 
really like that situation. Yeah, but will they get A.C. Law back? He is out with an ankle or leg injury of some kind. Is Law going to be able to return to the game? They're going full court pressure right now with Law out of the game. Another little adjustment by the coaches. That works that sidelines. Donald Sloan, a key figure now for the Aggies. He can handle the ball. He's a combination guard. And away from the ball, the foul is going to go against Justin Mason of Texas. And that's going to put them over the limit, I believe, and send the Aggies to the line. So Brian Davis will go to the line for Texas A&M. He's getting big minutes because of the foul trouble for the big guys. Another freshman. He's out of Dallas, 6'9", 245. Probably nice and quiet. I tell you, I'm really quiet here right now. Yeah. Hey, Dick, college basketball continues on ESPN a Wednesday night with a doubleheader. First game from Louisville as they take on number 23, Georgetown. The Hoyas playing well. And then the game you're going to be doing, North Carolina and Duke, Wednesday night, 9 Eastern on ESPN, subject to blackout in ACC markets. All a part of Rivalry Week presented by Cisco. It's not a Rivalry Week unless Duke plays Carolina. I think talking about some rising stars and coaching. Billy Gillespie and John Thompson are third. Yeah. I think Georgetown's going to be a real tough Tough team to deal with in tournament time. You know, James is having a nice night quietly. He's got 11 points right now. Well, he came in with a big-time reputation. Good athlete, very mobile, very agile. 6'7 yeah. guy, versatile. Yes, Davis with a nice move, went right around to Rams. Did a great job getting the ball down in the post. That's the one deficient area he still has to work on. Making a real commitment to play on the defensive side. Augustine buries a three. He's big time. Here comes AC Law. It looks like they take yep. him up. He knows this is his time, baby. We're getting down <laughs> the last five minutes. It's AC Law time. Pavelaskis, look at this array of moves, but he misses the reverse. Oh, ran him right down. They got a block. They got a block on Sloan. AC Law is going to be coming back in. When we come back, we got some kind of game going on here at Reed Arena tonight. ENS exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. And in part by LendingTree.com. When banks compete, you win. And Cisco, welcome to the human network. Back here in College Station, the home of the 12th man. Such great football, football yeah. tradition here, of course. And boy, the basketball tradition is coming along nicely. A sellout here tonight, the largest crowd they've had here at Reed Arena, 13,196. We had a chance to talk to the two leaders, or two of the leaders of the, the Reed Rowdies, Aubrey Bloom and Blake Coleman, well, before I the game. some shirts. Yeah, they're, they're organized. They, they laid out shirts for everybody. They got their cheers and chants and swaying back and forth on opposing free throws. And students who have been here a few years cannot believe the transformation in the team and in the interest in the team and obviously those two things go hand in hand well when he came here i thought this was one of the call coaching suicide jobs i have no shot but he knew what he was doing he loves the state did a great job at texas el paso before he yeah. came here That's everybody true. knows him as billy clyde or the, around the high schools he's, he's a legend from texas Went to school in Texas, was an record. assistant in high school, junior college at Baylor, and look at the turnaround. Oh, yeah. Wow, 016. He won't take much credit for it, though. He'll deflect it every time you bring it up to him as Abrams knocks down the free throws to make it a three-point game. Laws back in there for the Aggies. Kirk is on the floor with four fouls. Got her back in the zone. Yeah. Jones is on the floor as well, Dick, with four fouls. Came out of the man-to-man. -man. Carter, he can shoot it. The threat of the three and a great ball fake allowed him to get right to the rim. Yeah, because of his ability to shoot that yeah. trifecta. Got into triple threat position. The Reed Rowdies jump up, they're standing there. Texas has already scored more points this year than anybody has scored in an entire 70. game against the Aggies. 70 was the high and a loss against Texas Tech, I believe. They've done a great job lately keeping the ball away from Durant. That was one of their priorities, too. No basket, a foul the before fake? the shot. Oh, look at a great fake right there to get him free. 
last four or five minutes, they're doing a great job keeping the ball away from Durant. Meanwhile, Dick, Dominique Kirk just fouled out of the game. He was in foul trouble all night long. And the Billy Gillespie wants trouble. an explanation. He was in foul trouble in the warm-ups. <laughs> I mean, come on now. He came in, started the game, knocked down a couple of big threes. Augustine's going to go to the line, and Donald Sloan is going to come back into the game. They're going to have some Big 12 matchup in a tournament. It's going to be really exciting down in Oklahoma City. I still like that Jayhawk team. I know they lost the other day, but there's so many good things when you see that club. they got to get Brandon Rush. When he's making shots and making plays and scoring the ball, they elevate their game. They've got a big one Wednesday night at Allen State. Fieldhouse against K-State, who's playing awfully well right now for Bob Huggins. And they're doing really well. They're playing without the kid Walker. He had a knee yeah. injury. Tore his ACL, yes, and everybody said, well, it's the end of the Wildcats, and they've played better since. A rare miss for Augustine. In fact, his first, first tonight after 12 makes. See, the one thing about A.C. Law, he gets them good shots. They play with poise. He has an understanding, good basketball IQ. Playing off the ball a little bit on this trip. And they're in that zone. Can slide somebody to the foul line area. Or Carter can take a three. Look at that Cavill rebound. Hoskins will go to the line. He's doing a terrific job. He's working so hard. He's so tenacious. Talk about a guy that gets maximum out of his ability. Let's go to Holly with more on the guy they call AK. Well, guys, a lot of people are saying that he may be the most improved player in the Big 12 this season. And one of the reasons is he's trying to take a more dominant role. Last year, he came in. He had just transferred in from a junior college. And, you know, AC Law was here. He was the man. Joseph Jones was the man. And so he really considered himself the third option. The coaches have really worked hard with him, trying to get him out of that mindset, get him to be more aggressive, more angry, more mean. He's really doing it, but they'd like to see him be even more aggressive and consider himself one of the top options, not take a backseat to anyone, not even a teammate. Well, he is the top option on the interior right now, Holly. He's been so effective here in this game. Durant is bunt, and if it's Jones, he's out of the game. So Jones and Kirk are out. Got a lot of time on that clock. Wow. Texas likes that. Big Barnes clapping. He enjoys that moment. Two starters have fouled out for AM. And Jones, a little leadership right here. Some words for his teammates before he leaves the floor, fouling out for the 18th, 18th time, time in his career. A big ovation from the crowd here at Reed Arena as he leaves and Brian Davis comes back in. You know, Billy Gillespie's a master motivator. Early in this year, he's very unhappy in the Oklahoma game. He benched all five of his starters early in the game to send them a message. And they finally beat Oklahoma for the first time in 14 years. You know, for folks who did not see the game Saturday night in Kansas, Jones and the Cavaloskas were in foul trouble. And Kansas was crushing AM on the glass, but the Aggies, they don't pout. They don't, they, they're used to dealing with adversity, and they overcome it pretty well. And they had a great comeback to win that game at Kansas. Nice and here they are. They'll just play their game regardless of who's on the floor. Nice post play right there. Part of their high percentage shot selection. They really have a very simple formula. Shot selection, defend, play as a unit, and usually win. Augustine the miss, and the follow is there for James. James really active tonight. Meanwhile, Durant hasn't scored in a while. No, he's been real quiet. Yeah. They're keeping the ball away from him. He has not had a field goal since in about 10 minutes of, of basketball time tonight. Well, when he's taken a shot recently, yep. hasn't taken a shot. They've kept the ball away from him. 25 and 11, <laughs> though, already for Kevin Durant. Man-to-man -man defense right now by Texas. Keep changing. Sloan turns the corner. Nice move. I like that kid. He gives them quality minutes. He comes off the bench. He's a positive player. Sloan and Davis have both been big off the bench tonight for the Aggies. There's a shot attempt, but a little too much for Durant as he comes up short. Trying to go to backdoor cut. He got some help from the help side. It's danger time right now for Texas. It's a little danger time here. Uh oh, he can shoot it. Miss, but an offensive rebound for Davis. I'd go to big AK inside. I would post him on the interior against James. Got a size advantage. I bring it to the wing and slide him to the post. Carter, yes! Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. 
He's out of rows. The match into his game to be shooting at the logo. At the Reed Road, he's loved it. Kevin Price is going to go bananas on Wednesday. There's the drive. Rivalry week. Then we get the passion of the Kentucky fan on Saturday. Foul on Justin Mason, his fourth. Kabalaskis out, Pompey in. And Carter going to the line. He has had a terrific night. This could be as good as the 48 hours that they've had in basketball here Ever. in many a time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you talk about the 48 hours from Kansas game on Saturday to tonight. The team considered to be the best they've ever had, 79-80. They went to the Sweet 16. Second round last year, thinking a deep run this year. Slow. Pompey. Oh, look at the work on the offensive ball. Carter with a put back. Oh, hustle, hustle, hustle. Billy Gillespie. He's got the magic. Too strong for Durant. Sometimes you wonder if he drills down a little bit in terms of getting a little tired all the minutes he plays. A.C. Law. And the out of bounds to Texas. 4.02 to go, and the Aggies have stretched it out to a dozen in the midst a of two trouble. players fouling out of the game for them. Shows in the depth they have. Led by as many as 14 in the first half. Texas led briefly. Early in the second half, announced the Aggies by a dozen. And again, the more you see them, Dick, the more you have to be impressed. Oh, I'm impressed. I think they're going to be such a tough out for someone on a neutral floor. Come postseason, March Madness. Last year, they made a little run. They were beaten on a dramatic shot by LSU, who we went to the Final Four. Time now to take a look at our Cisco game track tonight with AM leading the Longhorns 87 to 75. Another big night for Kevin Durant. Really was on fire early in the second half. AC Law, despite injuring what appeared to be his left ankle, 19 points and 12 assists tonight. Josh Carter has 23, eight rebounds and five assists as well for AM. They're having a terrific night despite foul trouble from the moment the game began. I'll tell you one thing, when you really compile the points and you look at the assists of AC Law, he's responsible for 43 points with those assists and score. And I told you earlier in the show, Josh Carter could be big yes. in this game. And we talked about AC Law. He's playing as well as any point guard in America. Well, you know, he's really played well at the point guard slot. Aaron Brooks out of yep. Oregon. I know they had that slip on a West Coast trip with UCLA and Southern Cal. Under four to play in a raucous Reed Arena at College Station. Oh, man, how many players in America could make that shot? Kevin Durant with 27. Great body control. Will he get his fourth consecutive 30-point game? It would be his seventh in his last 10 games if he gets to 30. He's averaging 33 a game in conference play. That's eight conference games against some really good coaches and teams that are prepared. Law using some clock right now. He loves this time yeah. of the game. He really does. Especially if they're behind. He wants the ball. They say in a timeout of Kansas, he was begging the coach, get me the ball. Get me the ball, coach. That's right. And, and Billy Gillespie said, fine, you're probably a better coach than I am. You're going to have it. You know, some of the other guys, they like to run. They have fear of failure. The biggest relation of all is fear of failure. You don't have fear of failure. I know you don't afraid. You're not afraid to fail. Point lead for AM over Texas a year ago, a little bit later in the season, March 1st to be exact. Texas was here. Taken on AM. PJ Tucker with a chance to give the Longhorns a late lead, but the shot clock expires, setting up an opportunity for the Aggies and setting up an opportunity for AC Law to begin uh -oh. creating his legend. Uh -oh. The knuckleball three uh -oh. goes in at the buzzer. Celebration. AM 46, Texas 43. A huge win for them last year, solidifying and at large. Let's go to Holly Rose. Look, guys, that was such an important make in the history of Texas AM. It's already been immortalized. In this painting of AC Law over Daniel Gibson, the title simply the shot. They passed out thousands of these posters here tonight. Everybody was scrambling for them. I got this one to take home. But guys, this is so amazing that they already have this in a beautiful painting. Wow. That's how important the shot was in their history. That was really the first defining major, major win for Billy Gillespie. That was the game that really got them going. And AC Law, our takeover player, 
presented by Jordan Brand, 19 points, 13 assists, despite leaving briefly with an injury. If that is just simply called the shot, well, what do you call the shot from Saturday night up in exactly. Kansas? Because that well, one was just as big. They got to make another poster. <laughs> Davis at the line. A very capable backup, Davis is, for both Kavalaskis and Jones. Well, he and Sloan have played well off the bench. They really have. They've contributed to some positive minutes with guys in foul trouble. What is he going to be celebrating, it looks like, here on this campus tonight? The 48 hours of hoops hysteria has really been big. Already in sole possession of first place in the Big 12. They can put a little distance between themselves and the Horns with a win here tonight. Done a great job at certain spurts in this game, keeping the ball away from Durant. There he is, spinning on Pompey. Way too strong. Rebound, Kavalaskis. Pompey did a great job physically, really muscling up on him. And now AC Law, they're going to try to get the ball out of his hands. He'll be content to use the clock. Also, remember this: they're the best free throw shooting team in the conference. Yep. Almost 75 percent as a team. Exactly. I mean, every area of the game, they excel. How about that? Slow. And give Law, it should be another assist well, for Law. Well, started by that foul line area being vacant. And they were able to slide in there and get that drive. Good celebration, Tom. Right. This right. baby is history. They have every right to stand and cheer. They got a gallant effort against them by the kids from Texas, from Austin. They'll have a tough day when they have to go to Austin. The bench Look at work this. of Sloan and Davis instrumental in that advantage. It's nine to one ratio. Yep. Even a dummy like me can figure that out, man. I have a dummy. You know, Law and Pompey are the only two players on this team now who were part of the team that went 0 16 in conference play three years ago. A number of the players contributing now were recruited by Melvin Watkins, the predecessor for Billy Gillespie, but specifically for Law and Pompey. How sweet is all this right now, given what they went through three years ago? Well, it just shows you when you blend guys together, get them to understand how to play together, share the ball, a new philosophy. I'll give you a baseball analogy because you're a big baseball guy. Think Jimmy of guys Lillard. like, yeah, the Detroit guys like Brandon Inge who were right. on the Tigers Jimmy when they Lillard. lost 119 games and Surprise all the success I came up with that right away. Hi, huh? yeah, surprised. I know, I know you're a baseball guy. I'm not guy. as dumb as you think. <laughs> 91-77. You would think in this kind of game, with the tempo the way it is, it would have faded. And they can beat you in a lot of ways. And now AM stops the clock, which Billy Gillespie doesn't want. Texas is going to go through some growing pains. Billy Gillespie, as we said earlier, terrific guy. Here's Rick Barnes, who's done a phenomenal job at Texas. They've really made such a commitment to basketball. You talk about the combination of football coach and basketball coach. They got a great combo there at Texas with Mac Brown and Rick Barnes. Foul was on Kavalaskis, his fourth. Justin Mason at the line for the Horns. Kavalaskis has gotten the most out of his minutes tonight, though. He really does. He gets the most out of his ability. Yeah. And that's all coaches really want. I think you always define what a coach is all about. And the ability to get maximum out of a player, to utilize his strengths to the best of their ability, and to hide their deficiencies. A guy who desperately wants to have a pro career to bring his mom over from Lithuania so he can see her again. It'll make life easier on her. I think he's going to have a chance. I really do. I think he's going to have a great opportunity to make somebody's club. He can shoot the 15, 16 foot shot facing. He's aggressive. And another foul stops the clock. That'll be on Carter, and Durant will go to the line for two. Well, we want to say this. Billy really concerned about his dad battling prostate cancer, undergoing chemotherapy, and today made a great gesture for the V Foundation. He donated $50,000 to be a member of the President's Club, which consists of a lot of guys like Carnizzo and Mike Bray and John Calipari, Rick Pitino, Mike Krzyzewski, John Saunders. A great cause that you are spearheading along with the likes of John Saunders and Nick Valvano. And there's a foul on James. Hey, I'll tell you this. I know you're hosting it on May 18th. It is selling out. There's only a few seats available at $1,000 at the Ritz-Carlton where we're going to honor Mike Krzyzewski. And you got some other dignitaries, other coaches will be oh, in yeah, attendance, Oh, yeah, big-time guys are coming to it as well. Tables are flat. I can't believe it. Things just went out. Anybody wants to help us, just call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V.
Let's look ahead a little bit toward rivalry week, the game you've got Wednesday. Caroline and Duke, the Blue Devils have lost two in a row. What do you think of that match? Well, you know, when you look at Duke, they don't have the great scorer that they've had in the past who can make the big play late. But in every game, they're right there. They're right there to win because they commit to themselves defensively. They play as a unit, and nobody beats them easy. It's going to be a typical battle, even though a lot of people would think, looking at personnel, Carolina, big edge. When you get there to Cameron Indoor Stadium, I'm telling you something. You know that the commitment of the Duke kids is going to be really something special. So it'll be a great game. Abrams, no. And the rebound to Carter. He'll wrap it up. And I still like North Carolina despite the loss to Sidney Lowe has done a great job. He, by the way, is my coach of the week on my website. They had an outstanding week with a couple of big wins. The foul will go against Abrams of Texas, and Law is going to go to the line. How about Josh Carter with the numbers that he's put up tonight, Dick? You talked about him being kind of an X-factor tonight. Yeah, we talked about him as an X-factor. Look at this, 23 and 10, a double-double. I don't think he shoots enough. He's 9 for 17. He asserted himself a little bit, especially when A.C. Law went out of the right. lineup. Law at the line right now looking for his 20th point of the game. I think it's amazing when you look at the fact that in the last five minutes, he has outscored the opposition. That's incredible in Big 12 play. They got some great coaches in the Big 12. Starts with the winningest coach in men's basketball in the history. Mr. Knight, what about the great gesture of the clock? And the index cards that are presented to the Rick That's Barnes. right. They're very close friends. Yes, sir. Man spoke so glowingly of them on a tape presentation. Augustine with a layup and a timeout called by Texas. I love Augustine. I really think this kid is so good, DJ Augustine. 21 and 9 assists for Augustine tonight. Well, Dick, you just talked about it. Uh, Rick Barnes part of a video tribute for Bob Knight, and Bob Knight repaid him this way. I've taken the card from the New Mexico game, <coughs> put it in a frame, and it very simply says, to Rick Barnes, a great coach and friend, Bob Knight. I got home that night, and uh, after I got through watching my tape, I just sat at my office chair at home and looked at that, and uh, I was in awe, and I still am, because I've said before, I think he's the greatest coach that's ever coached this game, and I think he'll be the coach that, uh, you know, when you think of NFL, you think of Vince Lombardi and everybody's compared to him. I think when you think of college basketball, you'll always think of Bob Knight. Well, you know, as you look at Rick Barnes, you're going down to Louisville, they're naming the floor, Denny Crum. Floor, I've said from day one, they should be naming that building down in Indiana, the Robert Montgomery Knight Assembly Hall. Kelvin Sampson, as we know, is going to do a great job yep. there. Eric Gordon, when he comes in, did you catch him at all against No, I didn't see. You were telling me about it. Yeah. He was unbelievable. You talk about a superstar who's going to bring electricity to Bloomington, Indiana. But I just wish Kelvin would start really getting everybody down there to really recognize what Bob Knight has done at Indiana. 662 wins, three national titles. I mean, enough is enough from those that make decisions who have a little ego and a little political agenda. Do what is right. And what is right, that building should be named Robert Montgomery Knight Assembly Hall. And I don't want to hear about rules that they got and all the, Come on now. I think if they did that and they changed the the alternate possession rule, you'd be a happy guy. Those I are the two a, things yeah, that get I under your skin more than anything. Well, it's not fair yeah. I mean, how he's not in the Indiana University Hall of Fame. Come on. Is that right? Durant with the ball, 28 points, 15 rebounds. But and it may sound silly. They've made him work for it tonight. J.D. Lewis misses the three. They made him work for it, number one as most teams will. But number two, they did a great job in a segment of the game of keeping the ball away from them. Pompey tries the jam, and Durant's not going to let him have it. Durant commits the foul. Sports Center is next here on ESPN. And among the stories that will be covered, Colts bringing the celebration back to Indianapolis. Why Peyton Manning is not <laughs> satisfied with just one title. And who's your player of the year? Is it Kevin Durant or Greg Oden, as we talked about? Who would be the number one pick if they both came out? Well, I'm going to tell you this. You certainly can't talk about Odin as player of the year. He really doesn't get in that mix after missing all the time he's missed. When you talk about Tucker, Fasikas, and people of that stature, Aaron Brooks. Brooks yeah. 
I mean, it's really but this not guy, fair. This guy is right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's right there. Durant. Well, the VBDI's got him right now, number one. What he's done to put this team in position to win games with that kind of young squad is just unbelievable. Remember, he's playing with a lineup that has three other freshmen plus himself in the starting lineup. Sloan out. Bryson Graham will come into the game and now for A&M. Augustine still working, still driving. 23 now for DJ Augustine. The score is so absolutely deceiving. The crowd is booing Rick Barnes for calling another timeout. 97 to 82, A&M over Texas. <laughs> you know, we've talked a lot this year, Dick, about Florida, Wisconsin, Carolina, Ohio State, some of the other top teams. Where does A&M fit in this conversation? Well, they fit in as a team because of tempo, because of A.C. Law and the way he controls the game. They can beat any of those teams on a neutral floor. Don't forget UCLA. UCLA, they you're get right. Get them in yeah. there as well defensively. But they're right there in the mix. I mean, I put them a step below, obviously, when you took Florida, UCLA, and that level. But they certainly are a dangerous basketball team who's capable on a given day of beating anyone. A&M has three losses this year. At LSU by 12. UCLA. Against UCLA in Anaheim by three. And at Texas Tech by two. Big night for AC Law, their leader. And he did a lot of it early when they needed it. Yep. And he got a lot of help tonight. Josh Carter, a big night. Kavalaskis, a very good night. And Davis and Sloan, very important off the bench. Tough to pressure them. Four on one. The good one is spacing. Duran and Law with a wise decision. Good spacing. Back the ball off. Good IQ. Manage the clock. Get another W. 21 in a row with the lead rowdies. They're enjoying this. This has been as good a two- or three-day span as A&M's basketball program's ever had. And Billy Gillespie wanted to send a message out to Shelby Metcalf. They're thinking of you, Shelby. Bryson Graham with a three, and it's 100 wow. points on the board for the Aggies. Wow. So they beat him in football, and they beat him in hoops. And they get another shot on him in Austin. The Aggies with another big win, 182 over Texas. Third straight 20 win season, first, first time. time that's yeah. happened. Billy Gillespie's got it going on here in College Station. Impressive performance by AC Law, Josh Carter and friends. Kevin Durant, 28-15 in a losing effort for the Longhorns. The final score, AM and 100, Texas 82. Sports Center is next here on ESPN. For more on this game, tune into ESPN News for a post-game extra. For Dick Vitale and Holly Rowe, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching tonight from Reed Arena here at College Station. An 18-point win for the Aggies. Is an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Lincoln Financial Sports.